I'm recording this video with permission from Scholastic. Hey guys, um, today I'm going to be reading the first chapter of Frindle to you. Um, Frindle is a book by Andrew Clements. It was one of my favorite books as a kid and I haven't read it in a really long time. So I thought it would be fun to kind of do a read aloud with you guys um, so that we can continue that time together. So as we do this read aloud, you guys can continue your normal routine, grab a snack, um, sit down and let's read together. Um, I will put the description of the um, book in the description box below and so that way you guys can read what the book's about um and once you've read that let's get into the first chapter chapter one nick if you ask the kids and the teachers at lincoln elementary school to make three lists all the really bad kids all the really smart kids and all the really good kids nick allen wouldn't be on any of them nick deserved a list all his own and everyone knew it was nick a troublemaker hard to say one thing's for sure, Nick Allen had plenty of ideas and he knew what to do with them. One time in third grade, Nick decided to turn Miss Deaver's room into a tropical island. What kid New Hampshire isn't ready for a little summer in February? So first he got everyone to make small palm trees out of green and brown construction paper and tape them onto the corners of each desk. Mrs. Deaver had only been a teacher for about six months and she was delighted. That's so cute. The next day, all the girls wore paper flowers in their hair and all the boys wore sunglasses and beach hats. Miss Deaver clapped her hands and said, oh, it's so colorful. Then day after, Nick turned the classroom thermostat up to about 90 degrees and with a little screwdriver he had brought from home. All the kids changed into shorts and t-shirts with no shoes. And Miss, when Miss Deaver left the room for a minute, Nick spread out about 10 cups of fine white sand all over the classroom floor. Miss Deaver was surprised again at just how creative her students could be. But the sand got tracked into the hallway, where Manny, the custodian, did not think it was creative at all. He stomped right down to the office. The principal followed the trail of sand, and when she arrived, Miss Deaver was teaching the hula to some kids near the front of the room, and a tall, thin, shirtless boy with chestnut hair was just spiking a nerf ball or Nerf volleyball over the net made from the six t-shirts he tied together. The third grade trip to the South Seas ended suddenly. But that didn't stop Nick from trying to liven things up. Lincoln Elementary needed a good jolt every once in a while, and Nick was just the guy to deliver it. About a year later, Nick made the great blackbird discovery. One night, he learned on a TV show that red-winged blackbirds give a high-pitched chirp when a hawk or some uh, other danger comes near. Because of the way the sound travels, the, the hunter birds can't tell where the high-pitched chirp is coming from. The next day, during silent reading, Nick glanced at his teacher, and he noticed that Miss Avery's nose was curved, kind of like the beak of a hawk. So Nick let out a high, squeaky blackbird beep. Miss Avery jerked her head up from her book and looked around. She couldn't tell who did it, so she just said, shh, to the whole class. A minute later, Nick did it again, louder. Beep! This time, there was a little giggling from the class, but Miss Avery pretended not to hear the sound, and about 15 seconds later, she slowly stood up and walked to the back of the classroom. Without taking his eyes off his book, and without moving at all, Nick put his heart and soul into the highest and most annoying chirp of all. Beep! Miss Avery pounced. Janet Fisk, you stop at that instant. Janet, who was sitting four rows away from Nick, promptly turned white, then bright crimson. But it wasn't me, honest. There was a catch in Janet's voice, as if she might cry. Miss Avery knew that she had made a mistake, and she apologized to Janet. But someone is asking for big trouble, said Mrs. Avery, looking around like a hawk every second. Nick kept reading and didn't make a peep. At lunchtime, Nick talked to Janet. He felt bad that Miss Avery had pounced on her. Janet lived in Nick's neighborhood and sometimes they played together. She was good at baseball and she was better at soccer than most of the kids in the whole school, boys or girls. Nick said, hey Janet, I'm sorry you got yelled at during reading. It was my fault. I was the one who made the sound. You did? Said Janet. But how come Miss Avery thought it was me? So Nick told her about the blackbirds and Janet thought it was pretty interesting. Then she tried making a peep or two and Janet's chirps were even higher and squeakier than Nick's. She promised to keep everything a secret. For the rest of Nick's fourth grade year, 
At least once a week, Miss Avery heard a loud beep from someone in her classroom. Sometimes it was a high-pitched chirp, and sometimes it was a very high-pitched chirp. Miss Avery never figured out who was making that sound and gradually trained herself to ignore it. But she always, but she still looked like a hawk. To Dick, the whole thing was just one long and successful science experiment, and Janet Fisk enjoyed it too.